with the removal of those those crossbars and, and now having the bifacial glass, what, what does that mean in terms of the physical strength of the panel? So now this comes with a 30 year warranty because of the glass back sheet. The lower this number is, the, the better the, the product's gonna perform. The better your thermal in, performance. In with this product, we're turning on earlier, we're staying on later because of the spectral response. So you're getting the benefit of keeping your panel cooler and getting more energy out of it. The smarter way to go solar. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. Today we're coming back to you from RE Plus, which is the large international solar conference here in Las Vegas. This morning I'm joined again by George McClellan from REC. We're looking at the brand new REC Alpha Pure RXG. So George, always good seeing you. Thanks for taking time to chat with us this morning. Good to see you too. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for uh, taking the time to come over and talk with us. We really enjoy our, uh, our time with Solar Surge. So RXG, it's a great new product. Um, it is focused mostly on the residential. You can see it's coming in at a new 480 watt class product. And that's actually a product that we're manufacturing. That's not Bragawatts. So this act, this 48s are coming off of our line. What is new about the RXG product is it a, it's a dual glass product, which means it is bifacial. So you can see on the back side we have a uh, very high bifaciality. Now, if you'll notice, one of the things that is typical about an REC is we usually have the back support bars. We have removed those back support bars to increase the bifacial gain on the back side of the cell. So we'll go back over to the front of the cell. We've got or the front of the product, again, coming in at 480 watts, dual glass. So why do we do that? Obviously for bifacial, but if you do dual glass, you also increase the weight of your product. Uh, what REC has done is we've gone to 1.6 millimeter glass on the front side and the back side. Instead of having 3.2 millimeter glass on one on the front side, now you've just got two panes of glass, the weight remains the same. So it's a bifacial glass glass, same weight as your uh, standard glass back sheet. Another now, now, George, just a quick, quick question for you here, because last time you and I were together, we were doing some extreme, <laughs> we were doing some extreme breaking testing stuff. <laughs> on these solar panels. We were doing hail impact tests. We were doing a snow load, a dead load a test. With the removal of those those crossbars and, and now having the bifacial glass, what, what does that mean in terms of the physical strength of the panel? That's a good question. So we've got, you do end up losing a little bit in your maximum loading. But again, this is a residential panel it's not going to be in, used for all extreme cases, uh, but we do have the standard IEC um, 61215 loading, uh, 5,400 pascals front side, 2,400 back side. So it's comparable to most residential panels, but then again, we're up in this, uh, this high watt class. Now, one of the things that is good about a glass glass product is that you can extend your power warranty. So now this comes with a 30 year warranty because of the glass back sheet. So moving on to the back side of things, you can see that we've got, you've got it opened up. Interesting piece, you're like, George, you can't see through between the cells. You don't actually, you don't really need to do that because of the, uh, the amount of reflection that's coming off the rooftop. So you don't have to completely optimize for, um, you don't have to completely optimize for the bifacial gain. Uh, it's more of just a, it's, a, it's an adder. It is the standard uh, Alpha Pure RX uh, layout, where you've got your strings coming in the in the vertical range. This is uh, works pretty good as a landscape panel. It can work in landscape or portrait configuration. One of the things we've done is uh, that we've gotten our by our gain from where we're getting gain in watts peak at STC. Um, is we've gone to a microcrystalline layer on the front side and back side of the cell, which increases your spectral response in the blue range. So now with this product, we're turning on earlier, we're staying on later because of the spectral response and because of the thermal response, we're now at your peak power range, our peaks are higher. So this is turning out to be a very good product for uh, the residential space. Let's, let's take a moment here, George, because I think there's a, a little teaching opportunity here. 
You know, when, when consumers look at the wattage rating on the solar panels, not all watts are really the same, right? I mean, a lot of these are STC ratings. We talk about perfect ideal lab conditions. But what are some of the other factors that, that uh, affect how much actual usable energy yield comes off the module? You talked about the, the, the wider operating spectrum, right? Right. Um, what, what other so, factors, yeah, what other that's factors a, that's uh, a great point. affect that? People will look at this product and they'll say, I want to get 480 watts out of this. So if they've got a, a 10 kilowatt system, they want to see it operating at 10 kilowatts all the time. It's not going to happen. This product works at 480 watts at 1,000 watts per meter squared. That's called, that's one sun. It's called a full sun. 1,000 watts per meter squared at 25 degrees C, 77 degrees F. Those are called standard test conditions. That's when you're going to see your peak energy. Typically, the panel is going to run, be exposed to sunlight between seven and 800 watts per meter square. So this is gonna drop off 20 or 30% on your peak power. So your power curve, it starts in the morning. It'll come up as the panels are nice and cool. It'll level off as things warm up. As the sun comes up, you'll end up getting your peak power maybe 40 minutes out of the day. Really depends on where you're at. If you think about thousand watts per meter square, but also 77 degrees, those two don't exist all the time. Yeah, <laughs> so not at the same time. They don't, exactly. So you get one or the other. So you're rarely going to see peak power, but this is the way that it's rated. All solar panels, you have to have a standard rating. Now, if you look on the data sheet, um, there is a value called NMOT, normal module operating temperatures. And those, that's at 800 watts per meter squared. That's pretty much what you're going to be operating at for the most part is at NMOT. And that's, that's been provided on the data sheets for about five years now. It used to be listed only STC and then people are like not understanding. So you put it in real world conditions um, that manages the expectations of the customer. Yeah. Now let, let's talk about temperature because I know that's another factor that affects solar module right. performance and output. So typically when you're in that middle part of the day when the sun is beating down directly perpendicular on your solar panel, well, typically it's going to be higher temperatures during that part of the day. So let's talk a little bit about temperature coefficient. I know temperature coefficient is an area that REC product has always performed well, but for Absolutely. those that may not be as familiar, can you explain uh, briefly why does temperature affect solar, solar panel performance? Yes, yeah, happy to talk about that. Solar panels, all crystalline solar panels have what's called a negative temperature coefficient. So what that means is as temperature goes up, performance goes down. All crystalline solar panels have this. So then it becomes a, uh, you have to modulate that temperature coefficient. The lower the temperature coefficient, the better your performance is going to be as temperature goes up. So with the REC, we're at 24.24% per degree C. So what that means is you're dropping it for every degree above 25 degrees C, you're going to drop, you're going to drop 1% or 0.24%. Yeah, 0.24%. It adds up, you know, as you start getting into, you know, your 100 degrees, that type of thing, or, or your 45 degrees C ranges. So you'll drop off up to 25, 30% at high temperatures. So basically, we want we want this number to be as low as possible. That's correct. And the lower this number is, the, the better the, the product's going to perform. The better your thermal in, performance. In, yeah. Now, the other piece of this is, is that you'll look at other manufacturers, you'll see a lot of them, there used to be some as high as, you know, 0 0.4, 0.5%. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people are driving that down. So how do you do that? You don't want your panels to heat up. What heats up the panels? Long wavelength light. So infrared hitting this, the HJT cells actually convert more infrared energy into watts. So you're actually, instead of turning it into heat, you're actually turning it into watts, which now are going to be, you know, sent back to your, op sent back to your inverters, which is great. So you're getting the benefit of keeping your panel cooler and getting more energy out of it. Right, and I think no. that's reflected in the higher module efficiency, right? That's exactly right, good capture. One of the other pieces of this is the contra to this is true as well. So if energy drops off when a panel gets hotter, 
energy increases as panels get cooler. So that's why you have to design to the lowest temperature. Your designs have to be designed to the lowest temperature in your region. So you've got historic load because what you don't want to do is design it to STC conditions and then you have a cold, clear day and all of a sudden your 300 watt panel is performing at 400 watts and you blow up your inverter. Yeah, and I've actually seen that before and too. I, I was gonna say, I've seen it before. I'm glad you've seen it too. Yeah, and it's, it's, been, it's, a it's, it's been a while because it's a mistake that you make once and you don't make it again. But, <laughs> but in, in reality, guys, because of, that, because of that temperature coefficient, you'll actually get higher voltage out of your solar panels in, in extreme cold temperatures. So you're actually probably gonna get the best solar panel performance in the middle of winter on those rare, clear, sunny days, but in the middle of winter, you may get slightly higher voltage out of your solar modules. And so I've seen it before where the inverter won't activate because now the voltage is, is too high out of that right. operating range. So the inverter just shuts off. You have no solar production that day. It will shut off or it'll make a really loud noise, which I've seen also, and that's not good. <laughs> you don't want to hear that bang. Yeah. You're like, what happened there? And yeah. then you look, oh no, I forgot. Yeah, I mean, mo most of the modern inverters are smart <laughs> yeah. enough to, to protect themselves if, if the voltage is outside of the, 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 um, the, the range. But you know, of course, some of the earlier generation equipment, you, you, uh, yes, you just blow the internal <laughs> components and <laughs> have to put it back together. Yeah, you, let, you let all the smoke out of it. Yeah. But let's uh, get back to the, to the pure yes. RXG. So we talked about the lower temperature coefficient, we talked about the higher module efficiency, so more, more of, of the sunlight that hits the cell surface is going to be captured and converted into usable electricity. Right. What about warranty and degradation rate? Those are another two factors that REC is known for, for performing very well. Do we lose any in, in area of degradation rate with the new architecture? So there's, that's a really good question. So the degradation rate is going to be based on your platform, so that's your material system, but also your solar cell itself and then your manufacturing. So the degradation rate stays the same, um, 0.25% per year for at 25 years, it's still at 92%. But as you can see, this is now, now because of the glass back sheet, um, it gives you superior degradation performance. So it extends that out. So now this is a 30 year uh, power warranty uh, for uh, standard power warranty. People will ask then, well, what about the Pro Trust warranty? Pro Trust warranty also gets extended for materials and workmanship and for labor. So this is all, this is gonna be, <laughs> this module is gonna stick around for quite a while, perform the way that uh, you're expecting from REC. Excellent, excellent. Now, George, in terms of cost, I know you can't give me a specific you know, unit pricing, but in terms of cost, how does this compare with the previous Alpha series? So one of the things that REC does is we're always very cost conscious. We're not just, uh, we're not in the, so if you remember back years ago, it just it used to be, you know, make it more powerful and we don't care what it costs. We just want more watts, 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 watts. Can't do that anymore. You have to be cost, you have to make your gains cost consciously. So we've focused on cost with this product um, it will remain competitive in the market um, as it comes to market. Excellent. Well, folks, this has been a first look at the new REC Alpha Pure RXG, up to 480 watts power per module. George, when do you expect these to be available in distribution? So those are coming. This is a production module here. So that's the good part. This is not something that was hand assembled, you know, cobbled together in our, in our, uh, our factory. So we're able to put this together. Uh, it really depends. It's going to be market driven is what I think. Um, what does the market want? You know, who's going to who's going to vote for this over something else? Um, we're expecting to see this, uh, you know, early next year is what I would what I would expect. As market demands come on board, and as you know, you have to you have to you know swap your lines out and do things. So you got to stop doing one thing to do another. But uh, you're probably expecting uh, early next year. Sounds good. Well, folks, you've seen it here first. Uh, again, this has been a chat with George McClellan. Uh, from REC, we're looking at the brand new Alpha Pure uh, RXG. Uh, by the way, folks, that's why we come to these conferences is to make sure that you know you all that can't come out here to Las Vegas or to wherever the, the conventions are, but you want to stay up to date with all the latest solar technology and product information. Uh, that's why we do these videos for you. So if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Uh, also, go ahead and subscribe as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new product announcements and new updates coming out, you can stay up to date with everything. But that does it for today's video. George, thanks for spending some more time with us. Thank you very much. Yeah, and thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered.
Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.